Hello and welcome back to the Ten Pine Podcast. Today we're here as normal with me, Luke, and Beefing. Hello. Right. This episode is sponsored by um, Atheropolis Clothing. As you can see, we've got these lovely shirts on. Yeah, we'll see the thing. But we're here with um, Shaq Spear and Josh Wright, and both boxers. How are we, boys? I'm not you. So I'm man. all right. Good man. I say I'm all right, lad, after that PT session <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> hey, I tell you what, you've done well, lad. You've done sound. <laughs> Feeling a bit sore. I don't know, half my legs now. I'm like dead. Yeah. Yeah. Anyone wants to get on Josh and um, get on his PTs, yeah, Josh. Yeah, get on me. PTs, dude. I'm normally back to the start. Um, so how do you just roll start like, getting into boxing and that? Go ahead, lads. You go first, can I? So basically, um, I was eight. I was a bit of a uh, wild kid. Uh, so my ma just stopped me. Stopped me from jumping around on the walls and uh, she got me in the Golden Gloves. Um, my uncle Chaz, who's dad, he used to take me there and from for years up until I was about 11 and then started doing a run from um, Beaumont Street up Kingsley Road up to Devonshire is it Belvedere with the, with the, the school yeah yeah, yeah 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 and then the right onto Peel Street then, and then yeah done that till about for like three years till I was 14 then went to the Everton Red Triangle um, won national titles there Turned professional with them. Um, had five professional fights, three knockouts, and then recently just joined with Denny and Georgie Vaughan. What age is like you turned pro then? Nineteen. Nineteen, yeah. How did that like come about? To be honest with you, when I boxed in the amateurs, um, I was more suited to the pros all the time, like with the point scoring systems and that. Yeah. Even though the past two, three years, the points scoring systems wins and it's turned to like the 10-9, like, like the uh, like, Do you want to explain how it works like for anyone that might not know like, about the points? So basically be- before it turned to like the professional boxing, it was point scoring at the time. So it was like accumulation of punches. So it was like, if I hit you, that's one point. If you hit me, that's one point to you. Yeah. Sort of thing. Um. So it wasn't really boxing, it was like tiff for tat, tiff for tat. Does it not matter like, to like how effective the punch was or anything like no, that? No, so if, if they see you, they go back as... Yeah, you like know. what it was, was there was five judges, two of them had to press for a point for it to be counted as they a press point. press like a button? Yeah, there's like yeah. a button everyone to press. And like it's a red one and yeah. a blue one. So, so you find it with one. the amateurs, you've seen some of them, <laughs> Amir Khan, one of them, have struggled to transition to the pros because the amateurs were so different at the time. So like... He was about, he was about like fencing. Do you know what I mean? Landing the shot, getting out of there, yeah. and, and when when you get in the pros and you're boxing men, they'll just walk through that, and they don't care, and they'll land their shots and put you away. Do you know what I mean? And that F- Frankie Gavin was the same. As yeah, well, very similar. So that's why the amateurs now have started to implement the three minute rounds, take the egg guards off. So even like in the high levels, they've started doing five rounds instead of three in the World Series boxing. It's called. So that's to. Uh, Make sure that when the good lads do turn pro, the likes of Lomachenko and that, they were ready. Do you know what I mean? Lomachenko yeah. had the world title fight in his second fight, and that was because he'd had so many in the world. So did not use high guards anymore. No, nah, nah, nah. when you're eighteen, you take them off. I do. Yeah. Mm. What What's your thoughts on like um? So with the women's rounds, even the professional, it's like only two minutes instead of like, opposed to the men's free. Yeah, look, I think for women's, they should go to three minute rounds, like, yeah. and and twelve rounds, just like us. How many, yeah. how many like rounds did he have? They have ten twos, don't they? I think. I think that's like the uh, like the pinnacle, like world title level. It's ten twos where we do twelve threes. There's is the maximum is ten twos. Because I was watching that like um, is it Natasha Jonas? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was yeah. watching her fight like last week, and obviously like it's two minutes and it starts getting like the rounds start like sort of like boiling and that, and then you just start the rounds. It's, over, it's like, yeah. It's hard scoring, isn't it? Yeah. Well, who was it today that boxed that Sh- Shannon Courtney? Yeah. Against that Rachel Ball on the Eddie Yeah, yeah. He, even they were saying after that on social media, they were like, we need like that extra extra minute. If we've got somebody here, it's, it's, yeah. t- it's took two minutes to get into range and, and find the shots to do it. You'd probably have seen more stoppages, done. wouldn't you? If it's three minute rounds. 100%. You know, if, you, if you have some, like most stoppages are late on and you'll find that most people get it late on in the round when they start getting tired yeah. so if, you're, if you've if you only got two minutes 
let's say the majority of the majority of people getting eighty C's in the last minute of the men's dance, you know what I mean? So the women don't get that extra minute to to, to wait each other, yeah. you know what I mean? It's like in the UFC, the women like they do five minute rounds just as well as the men do. Yeah. yeah. Like five five minute rounds Some as well. Some of them better. You know yeah. what I mean? Some that Joanna, them... that Polish bird. Yeah. What's her name? Joanna J. Did she fight last week? I don't know. She used yeah. to be the world champion at flyweight yeah. or something. That Amanda Nunes as well. Yeah, she's an animal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, what were your upbringings like then? To start off with, we'll go to you first. So, I'm from from Toxteth around here, um, quite a deprived area. Um, I wouldn't say I had the worst childhood. I'd say I probably made a few bad decisions, as as some kids do growing up. Mm. Um, could have went down one road, could have went down the other, uh, and thankfully, I had my first daughter at fifteen, and that just. That's How was that at fifteen? Because like I think a lot of people would say like they won't be able to handle that at that age. You know what? It was mad, you know, like now, <laughs> e- e- <laughs> e- even still now, yeah. Like when I get called dad, it's 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 the best feeling in the world, but it's weird because I'm like, wow, I'm getting called dad, like. I don't think I ever got over it to be honest with you. Still to this day, I still it's still like getting used to it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um. Now I've got four. Four. Yeah, four girls. Well, four just, girls. Did yeah. you have all the rest of them? So my first one, I was fifteen. She was born. So she was fifteen when she was conceived, and she was born three months before my sixteenth birthday. Um. The second one was, I was eighteen. Um, and then 22, and then I've recently just had one, 23. Oh, so how was your upbringing? Mine was all right. I, I grew up in Prescott, which is a bit out the way. Yeah. Um, Similar to Shech, I could have went around one road or the other, but my road were not like trouble or nothing like that. It was just pure laziness, do you know what I mean? There's a lot of people by ours who just sit in the house and smoke weed all day, and that's how they live, do you know what I mean? They're yeah. on the games yeah. all day and night. And obviously, a lot of we went to school with are like that. So I had the choice of that. But when I started boxing, I started boxing because everyone from our year in school was going to, to this boxing that night, near enough, everyone. And um, and I went with them and I stuck at it and they, and they after didn't, you know what I mean? So like a couple of them stayed on for a few years, had a few fights and, uh, and then they dropped off. And I think I'm the only one left now who still boxes. Started off at the Iton, um, Iton ABC on the George field, George's Field. And then... After a couple of weeks there, I left there and went to the ISR, which is in Prescott. And um, when the ISR coach went to get me card from from the item, their coach gave it over to, to Peter from the ISR and he said he'll never box that kid. And Peter just went, I'll, I'll take it anyway. Do you know what Why I mean? Why did you reckon he said that? I, he must, just mustn't have seen much in me, to be honest, at the time. I was only, I was only a kid, couldn't throw a punch to save my life, do you know what I mean? But then I carried on going, worked hard, ended up having about 15, 20 fights with the ISR. And um, moved to the Solly after that, which is just an Edmonton Valley up there. Um, I've had about 20 off of the Solly, and then after that I decided to turn pro this year, just before the lockdown it was, so a bit of, bit of a hard time to turn pro, but, yeah. but um, I'm just enjoying the transition at the minute, training with Shaq and, and Jazza as well. When did you two like start training together? About a month ago, weren't yeah. it? Yeah, a bit longer than that. Yeah, about a month or two ago. Mm-hmm. Would you say that gave him motivation, like someone saying something like that, like proved them wrong? Sort of thing? Um, to be honest, I didn't really know about it until I was about 10 fights in. And then yeah. we seen this, the fella who said it at a show, and he came over and congratulated me for, for winning and that. And, um, and my coach at the time, he, he nudged me and he went, when I went to get your card when you were a kid, he said, he said you'd never box. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I wish you'd told me that earlier. I said, that was on his face. Stole, 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 stole it on him. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like that's like, I don't know if you feel that as well. So you know, if someone says this is like bad and that, it's sort of like, I don't know, motivates me to sort of do better with it. Yeah, it does. Definitely. Yeah. You know what it's, I mean? it's just like in school, like, teachers used to say to me, just say, oh, you're full of shit. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, had to, I had to second guess then. Mm. You used to say, like, you're full of shit. Like, you won't, you won't carry on boxing. And... Don't get me wrong, like I fell off a few times, not but not like fully off, like because that's all I know, if that makes sense. So, yeah, I, I feel sometimes it can uh, push you 
to like to like go to further, prove, yeah. Yeah, to, to to prove the doubt is wrong though, you know. If everyone's saying you're great though, like you're gonna start believing it, aren't you? Even if you're not. That's you need like a criticism and that, don't you? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So if someone's yeah. blowing smoke up your ass all the time, you need someone there. Like George is the perfect person for this. Yeah. Because I've been there now for about three months, four months maybe, and I think I've had one or two compliments off George in the whole time I've been there. But you know he likes you. Do you know what I mean? You know yeah. he can see something in you, otherwise you wouldn't bother with you at all. Yeah. But he's not one to just be like, you're crazy or this, you're that. Do you know what I mean? You blow smoke up your ass. No, you've, got to, you've, got to, you've got to show him you've got it. Do you know what I mean? Before yeah. you leave and like... Say well done. Yeah. Pat you on he's, the back. He, he's had George. He's, he's been in the boxing game sixty years, so yeah. he's had. How old is he? Eighty-two. And he's still doing it. Now, he's right? still doing still it. Still one now. of the. He's probably one of the best coaches this country's ever That's had. Isn't he? Hundred percent. He's he's had the likes like Peter Coleshaw, uh, Gary Farnell, Derry. He's had so so many. He had all the Smiths at one point, didn't he? Yeah. He's had so many champions. Like he, he he's he's seen it all. So like. He's not one to, uh, you're fucking magnificent, you know? yeah. he's not asked. Like, if you're good, you're good, and you can do something to it. If you're not, then it's... Do you find that other coaches are like that, though, just saying your boss all the time? 100%. Um, yeah, you, you get some exactly. uh, more or less experienced coaches, probably, because in the, in the, at the Sully, I had another coach called Tony Challoner. He was exactly like George. You know, he mm. was, I went to college in Bolton, and he was the, it was a boxing college, and he was the head, the head tutor there. And that's how I ended up moving to the Sully because I um, got got talking to him and I ended up liking him and thought he, he can bring me even further on, yeah. do you know what I mean? But he's exactly the same. Like the day he says something nice to you, you, you know you've you know you've done something well, do you know what I mean? He's um so I think the more experienced they are, because Tony's very experienced as well, being in boxing for years, the more they know to hold back on compliments and that because boxers are quite egotistical, aren't they? You know what it is as well? A clever trainer does that because That'll make a fighter strive to get that compliment. Do you get yeah. what I mean? Yeah, yeah. You, you, you chase You go the extra, man. You, you do, you throw them extra ten punches. You work on them combinations. You work on your head movement. A- anything, because then once you do get that compliment, as you said, like you know, then like you, you've done something. It's, it's like found. It's building foundation. It's foundation it. settings, isn't it? That's it. Like like I said, them boxes are quite egotistical. So if you're if you've got coaches blowing smoke up their ass all the time, yeah. they're going to be going around to the mates and telling them how hard they are all the time, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah. And just fronting everyone in town, and I could even the boss, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. But the t- coaches like George and coaches like Tony that I mentioned, they they just teach discipline from day one, do you know what I mean? And they, they teach you how a boxer should act and how you should train and, and just how to be a proper professional, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, even after sessions, like, we'll sit there for the hours of George and just talk, won't we? George had us today. Not, not, not even about boxing, just... Yeah, us and George were talking today in the gym. It got, we finished the session, I'd say I finished the session, and we, we all finished, didn't we, at about, yeah. about 10 to 1, I think it was, and we didn't get off the gym till about 3 o'clock, because we were just sat there talking to George, and it was him who said, I'm getting off, we wanted him to sit down <laughs> and carry on, do you know what I mean? Like, I could have sat there all day and listened to him. That he's just dead wise, do you know what yeah. I mean? The longer we're around him... Um, the better for us, do you know yeah. what I mean? Like, even so, like, he's knowledgeable on the boxing, but then he's 82. Like, he's, life experience, he's seen, he's seen it all, mm, like, yeah, life experiences. Yeah. He's just a very knowledgeable man, he's, he's a good man. So, it's, I'm, I'm happy that, like, obviously, I met him. And mm. If we can't, if, like, with how good he is and the experience he's got on that, if we can't win a title of any sort under him, then we yeah, might as well just hang the gloves up now, do you know what I mean? Yeah. That's why I've come, that's why, like, I was thinking about a few different trainers when it's saying pro, but I was made up that, like, it was my uncle who knows, George, he used to box professionally for him himself, and he got in contact, and he said, and George said, bring him down, and he, he had a look at me, and he must have liked me, so he said, come down, carry on coming down. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm made up that I've ended up with George and Teddy as well, because Teddy's had 50 pro fights, do you know what I mean? You know, so he's knows what he's doing yeah. and he's great to have around the gym as well he's hilarious isn't he? oh, he's funny, isn't he? do you feel like that's a, like a lot of it's luck though like you both have the talent but if you sure they don't have like the nurturing type side of it like with the coaches it might not make it as far as someone that doesn't have as much talent but has better coaches if you know what i mean yeah um it, a lot of boxing's who you know do you know what i mean like like you've been pro for a few years now yeah. haven't you and he's like shaq's had struggled with like management and and, and yeah. different stuff like that so he's he's only had the five fights in a couple of years, but his talent level 
is right up there with someone who's had 15, 20, do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. So all he needs is that one shot against a kid like that to show how good he is. Yeah. Whereas the likes of me, I'm turning over now, but luckily, like I said, I've, I've, I've got an uncle who used to be a pro boxer himself. He's still got contacts and that and he's managed to get me in with a good management firm. Yeah. So I'll probably get opportunities a bit earlier than Shaq did in his career, do you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Yeah. But because cause we've come together now and Shaq's managed by Tony Bellew, who obviously we all know he's great in that. Um, it's, we're probably going to start getting the opportunities at the same time and that'll just make each other yeah. better than them, won't it? Do you know what I mean? And it's like, as you said about nurturing, <clears throat> like we're lucky to, we're both lucky to, have to work with Jazza. Like Jazz has yeah. been through it all, like from the top to the bottom, like he, he's, he's seen the bottom he's, and he's on his way back to the top. Having somebody like that as a friend and to box with, like the ad- the advice he gives you as well is yeah. just absolutely and then as I said like I'm with Bellew the stuff he tells me you like well. speak to Tony Bellew often do you as well? he speaks yeah. to me he's his manager I'm, I'm yeah. getting managed by um, Tom Stalker from MTK oh yeah so I, I just speak to him whenever when anything but th- that's another one Stalker as well like, yeah. what, what are you doing in the amateurs and it's just it's mad is it's it like two different sports the am- amateurs to the pros in a way 100%. Yeah. I think Jazza said that to us, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, yeah. I, like, I haven't had any fights yet, so I haven't I haven't felt any difference in terms of like being in the ring with smaller gloves on and yeah. and, not, and no vest and stuff like that. But even the training's completely different, you know what I mean? The training's... Like, don't get me wrong, I trained hard in the amateurs, I was always fit. Mm. But the training's like... It's a different sort of hard, do you know what I mean? You're not, you're not blasting your, your, your heart rate up every day, but you're working strength, you're doing this, you're doing that. And, yeah, it's just completely different. I've noticed my body starting changing already, and I've only been a pro for, like, two months. And it's, you'll be the same, won't you? It's, 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 it's intense. It's grueling. Like, <clears throat> it's just, like, them conditioning, conditioning sessions, they, they separate the men from the boys, honestly. Yeah. Like, in the amateurs, I remember it was just, like, pads, bags, skip, maybe little turn-up circuit, ten of this, ten of that, ten of that, bam, you know, the gym. Do, a little, do the odd two runs through the week. With this, it's it's more rounds. There's it, there's a lot more on the line. Like yeah. you, you, when you get knocked out in professional boxing, you get you get bingo, mate. Like in the amateurs, saying that like now with the ad guards off, but they're still bigger gloves. They're still more protected. You know what I mean? You bingo with everyone as an amateur as well, though, didn't you? Yeah, First <laughs> time I heard about Shaq here. First time I heard about him. I was boxing for my old club, the ISS, and a lad from our gym winning the championships. And apparently he got to do against against Shaq. And I I would heard stuff about him, like he he throws a mean body shot and stuff like that. The kid uh, that my mate was just saying, listen, he said I'll fucking I'll just tough up and I'll I'll, I'll just box his head off. And then I came Long in move, on, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I came I came in on the Monday and I didn't go to his fight. Came in on the Monday and he this kid were in a training. And I was like, oh, does anyone know how we got on? And the coach was like, yeah, he got stopped in the first round by a body shot. I was like, ah, he must have said that. And like, you know, we were only about, what, here is he? And then, dead like young, that, yeah. dead young. I give it to him, Charlie. Charlie, yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, pit me with two little jabs. And I just thought, well, okay, you've got to go. You've got to go, you can't stay. I think that was the only two punches I took in that whole competition as well, you know. Then later on, weren't it? Later on in both our amateur careers, mm. me and Shaq ourselves came half close to... We were always around the same weight, yeah. same age, do you know what I mean? Yeah. So it was only a matter of time before, let's say, we went in the ABAs together. We'd have yeah. probably boxed each other, do you know yeah. what I mean? But yeah. but Shaq ended up turning pro at 19, so by the time I'd went in the ABAs, he was already a professional then. He's at the same weight now? Um, nah, you're the weight below me now, aren't yeah. you? I'm super feather. You'll I'm lightweight. Would you ever, like, just have a, like, considered to have a cane to it? No, no. Teammates now, each lad, each other, bring each yeah. other on now, innit? Definitely. Oh. But yeah, it was a bit mad when we first met each other because we knew who each other was, we knew everything, probably everything about the each fir- other. The first thing we said to each other is we could have boxed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we could have ended up boxing, blah, 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 blah. But yeah, no, we're teammates, so. Could you never fight any of your teammates? No. Do you ever no, like came no. to it like, even just like it was life changing money and that type of thing? Nah, no. I don't think no. I don't think any even promoters don't really have that either. I've never heard of a pro boxing against yeah. his teammate. Funnily enough, when I moved to the Sully, I was 17 just about to turn 18 because my first fight was on my 18th birthday and we'd went in the championships and there was a kid going in the championships from the Sully who'd already boxed for them before me at the same weight and um, I ended up boxing him I got to do against him in my first fight so my first fight for the Sully was against the Sully 
So, Did you know him? I trained with him for eight yeah. weeks for these championships, you know what I mean? It become his mason now. <laughs> and we we got to the venue together, we'd we sat there warming up together to fight each other. Know what I mean? Do you want you in the ring and that? Do you not think like you think Mason was gonna hit him as hard or no. Yeah, nah, because no. I'd, I'd never sparred him, but I knew I wanted to win them championships, you know what I mean? And he he would have been exactly the same. So like even though you know him, you're touching gloves, you're smiling and that. As soon as the bell goes, it changes, doesn't it? Do you know mm. what I mean? It's just you, you're trying to win a fight and so is he. Yeah. And then as soon as the bell goes again for the end, you're yeah. back to mates again. I think I think that would have changed, that all certain things would have went out the window once you just knew that you were fighting with each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think if you go in the ring with any doubt of, oh, this is me mate and we're going to take it easy on each other. Yeah. I think... I think you're just a bit more respectful, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, 100%. I like think we... We're, we're a good level. We were good level amateurs, man. We yeah. all knew how to like, how to get into our opponents' head and piss them off a little bit. No, why you're in the ring, with <laughs> yeah. little elbows here and there, and that. So obviously that goes out the window. You're not going to do that to your mate because you get in the, the floor. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. you get in. You get in the gym on Monday. You need to be going to all the coaches. You fucking threw me on the floor. You know what I mean? <laughs> and stuff like that. I'm always both when you face. I just faced amateur fights. I was twelve. This I think. is this is funny. This so. Uh, my first trainer's Kevin Smith, who trains the Australian team now, <coughs> and Joe Harper, God rest his soul. Um, I lied to them about my age. Yeah. And they, they got me matched and everything. Um, they got me matched, and it, it come to me medical, and they were like, uh, Misha, we need your uh, birth certificate for the doctor and that. <laughs> and I was like, shit. So I was like, go ahead, get on and he was like, you're nine, you're not 11, and I was like, <laughs> but yeah, I think 10, 11, I had my first, my first time. So the don't want to get cancelled, did it, lad, yeah? Yeah, I don't think I'm going to get cancelled, <laughs> I, I went to Wales literally a year later, uh, Kevin Smith left by that time, I was getting trained by Georgie Treble at the time, and uh, Neil Oxton and Kev Barry, and Stephen Ungi. And I had to go to Wales for my first fight because you can. So in England it was 11 and in Wales it, it was 10. Really, yeah? Yeah, that, that you can have your first like competitive contest. That we yeah. in a skills or not in a proper competitive contest. I had four skills, me. Skills bouts for you probably you don't know. You don't have a result at the end because it's only for the year, it's only between the ages of 11 and 12. So Confidence it's just getting it. people used to walk into the ring with it. Because I'd say that's the in my first skills belt, that was the thing that struck me the most is walk into the ring with people like cheering on you or yeah. cheering on the other kid. And yeah. I boxed on the other kid's home show, so we had loads of fans. I oh, nearly I was only eleven. I nearly started crying when I got in the ring and like, <laughs> all I was hearing was go on Jake and I can remember it to this day. And um, <laughs> yeah, that's what it's about eleven year old kids and that. And um so yeah, that's just like I I had four of them because between the ages of eleven and twelve, you can't. I think when you're saying twelve, you can only have a proper fight then. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So I had these skills belts and it got me used to it. So by the time I had my first proper fight, it felt that easy. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It felt it felt easy walking to the ring and and you knew also how you were gonna handle it. Yeah. What's it like walking to the ring now? Like even now, and at that age. Depends where it is, lad. To be honest, I've boxed on shows where you'd have ring entrances and everything. Do you know what I mean? And You've got to pick a song and then you walk to the, like a box for the the northern title it was. And I got a text off my coach saying, Josh, can I have to pick a song? And I was like, what do you mean, pick a song? <laughs> 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 like, um, you should do the separate walkouts and, and you said, um, you, you're going to have to pick a song. So, because I boxed for the, for the Salisbury, I just chose Salisbury all by Peter Gabriel. Bell, so, yeah. it was just dead easy to come into. It's what Jazza comes into as well now. Yeah, and, yeah, I and, and, um, thingy. So I think I'm, I'm, I might just stick with that myself, to be honest, with my pro fight. Yeah. But then if you're boxing the ABAs, um, especially in the early rounds when there's loads of fights on, do you know what I mean? It's like fucking round of 16, and it? The area final. The area finals, and that way there's just loads of fights, even girls now as well, get, get, getting in getting in on the bills. It's like, you both walk out at the same time, and you both walk, like, everything's at the same time, do you know what I mean? So you yeah. walk out to silence. Because there's probably two rings on the go, so only half the crowd are watching you. So you've probably got a little smattering of applause and you just walk into the ring in silence. I probably preferred the ring entrance to myself. I'm not like Mike Tyson where he just walks with nothing, do you know what I mean? I probably <laughs> need something to pick me up a little bit. Yeah. You, I, I'd say the difference between uh, the amateurs and the pros like coming out and that. 
don't get me wrong, the amateurs was nerve-wracking, but I found that as a young kid, that's what probably let me down as a young kid. I used to let the nerves get to me. It was only when I got older. It's like, I don't know, like, I've, I've had nearly 100 amateur fights now, like, something just switched and it was just like, yeah. let's go. With the pros, it's completely different. It's bigger lights, bigger audience, bigger venue. It's just, it's completely, di- it's a completely different atmosphere t- to the amateurs. Um, I said like your own music and that. It's just. What do you come out to? Yeah, the White Stripes, Seven Nation Army. What do you? Yeah. Yeah. What do you come out to? Yeah. What do you come out to? Me? Yeah. Living for the weekend by hard fight. <laughs> <laughs> What is like sort of like because I like I mean it's like sports psychology because I do it now. What are you like thinking? Like why are you walking to the ring? Or are you not thinking anything at all? I tell you what. So in the amateur at the back end of my amateur career, I was just messing around. So um I think it was like my last five, six fights, amateur fights I had. I remember I'd gone in the ring and I'd remember, the first thing that came to my head was that run that run that I didn't do that night. Yeah, <laughs> doubts. Not even doubts it yeah, well yeah, they, yeah. they are doubts, aren't they? And I'd be like oh. I'd just be shaking my head in the corners, like oh <laughs> But then um since I turned professional, it's just been like a new lease of life. Um when you walk into the ring it's just like you know the hard work you've done, you know you're ready. Like, you know you're not getting beat. Yeah. You know what I mean? Them hard mornings, hard training sessions, late nights, that's what goes through your head. And you're just like, you, you know why you're there to, to win, you know what I mean? He's always going in 100% fit, or he's ever like yeah. picking up knocks and that type of thing and still fighting. Um. I don't know, I think, like, obviously there's been, most camps you're probably going to have, like, a week where you're not at your best, maybe you get, like, a little cold or something, but I've never went into a fight injured, you know what I mean, I've never, I've never, like, put myself in that position. I dislocated my knee about two years ago now, and um, I was out of boxing for the full season, so I didn't have any fights for, like, over a year, and I think it was a year and a half I didn't fight for, and then I went straight into the ABAs last year, so I didn't, I think I had one warm-up fight and then went straight into the ABAs. And I got to do it against the kid who I had the warm up fight fight with, but that warm up fight I had tape on my knee, not like proper to secure it. Yeah. But when you go in the ABAs, they say you can't have that, take it off you. So all I was thinking, like you were saying when I was walking to the ring, was is my knee gonna pop out when I'm fighting here? <laughs> and once I got that one fight out the way, ever since then I haven't even thought about it twice. Do you know what I mean? But all the way through camp leading up to the ABAs, even like running downstairs and stuff like that, going on jogs. And then getting in the ring as well. All I was worried about was that knee. That was the only thing yeah. in my head. But as soon as like you, you've gone past it once, and you don't think about it again. Do you have any superstitions or anything before you just go out or anything like that? I've got a few me. <laughs> um, I don't know the, the superstition. I don't know. I think to just like it's a mad one really. I've got these boots, these Reebok boots, and when I train, I have them three down. Do you know what I mean? So I don't have them tied all the way up to the top. I have them three Four. like oh, three yeah. holes down. But when I fight, I have them two down. And that's the only day. No, I don't <laughs> know why. Yeah. I don't know why, but in training, I don't like that. And I think I was doing it once with a fight. And it, they went a bit higher. And I was like, oh, that's a bit tighter that I'll keep it like that. But then when I went back to training, I was like, nah, I'll keep that for me fight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just never, I don't know what it is. Huh? Yeah. Uh, I think it's because I won. Know what I mean? Yeah. Just, just, I'll do that again. <laughs> no superstitions, really. I think uh, if you've done everything that's been asked yeah. Ask to yourself. Yeah. Then, um, you know, you prevail. Yeah. Yeah. Like, if you've worked harder, if your opponent's worked harder than you, then you doing a cross isn't going to do nothing, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. But Literally. It's not going to stop you from getting steamrolled in the first day. <laughs> like, well, it helps some people believe, then it's some of, some of the best fighters ever have prayed in the corner with their hands like that. But then, I mean? say a fighter that does do that and then doesn't do that, that might that could knock their confidence. It might just be in the mm-hmm. yeah. 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 And then they do do it, and then they box like, like a Pacquiao or maybe. Yeah. Are you yeah. thinking about your opponent while you're training? Are you ever thinking like, what's he doing now? Is he going on like three runs a day, or and I'm going on two <laughs> or anything like that? No, I, I think um, as I said, like 
if I like I know my my level, I know where I'm going. I know if I do everything that listens to everybody around me, <clears throat> as well as myself, and train hard. That's all you need to do. Train hard. Yeah. Train hard. Well, I know if I train hard, I'm getting the job done. You know what I mean? Yeah. In the amateurs, don't like it's. You, it's very rare, say in the pros, you, you know your opponent for a few weeks, don't mm-hmm, you? Mm-hmm. In the amateurs, it's very rare that you know you're fighting for that long, do you know what I mean? Either the draw's mm. going to be on the Sunday and you're boxing them on the Wednesday. So you don't really, really? get time. <clears throat> you don't really get time with the championships, at least, to yeah. to, to prepare for it. You'll know who's going in at your weight, mm. but there could be five kids going on in at your weight, so you're preparing for five different kids, yeah. do you know yeah. what I mean? So I think, I, I, I don't know, I reckon I, I perform better sometimes when I didn't know it was boxing, because yeah. I, well, I didn't think too much into it, you know what I mean? I yeah. just, I improved me, my own game. So that's what I'm going to try and do as a pro, is compete with myself and not with not with anyone else, you know what I mean? Yeah. I think um, focusing on yourself's the best thing. Like, I think you can overthink things when you're looking at other fighters. Yeah. You mm-hmm. could be fighting, it's like, oh, well, you done this, that fight, and you done this, that fight, like... Have you seen that picture of the swimmers? Where is it Phelps? Is it? And he's swimming, and he's just looking forward, and he's at by a mile, and yeah. every other person in the pool's looking at him, and it says <laughs> yeah. it says like winners focus on winning, losers focus on oh, winning, yeah, so yeah. something yeah, like that. Yeah. And that's what it's like, and you've just got to you, if you're only only bothered about yourself and what you're gonna do, then you can only go up. Whereas you're looking at someone else, you're you're gonna stay where you're at, yeah. because you're like, oh look how well he's doing, how come I'm not doing that? Because he's focusing on himself and, and yeah. you're not. I think it's an energy burner, especially <laughs> in the professionals now. Like you doing longer rounds, three minutes, but you you can't you can't afford to to burn energy like that. You yeah. just got to focus on yourself. Yeah. I, my advice to any fighter who's turning professional, or whatever, just focus on yourself. I would never worry about an opponent. Do you never watch like videos with the opponents to like no, analyze and that type of thing. You leave that for your team to do. Yeah. Like, yeah. Daddy or, or Daddy George does that. Does that Daddy you know does I mean? that. Yeah. Jo- George is. George is just dead wise anyway. You can teach it to beat someone without even knowing the name. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. But Daddy, I've, I've seen Daddy like analyze, analyze opponents before. Yeah. And, and like for him, um, it was Jay Farrell was telling me about his one. Like he said, he showed up to the gym one day and Daddy had like had like a game plan laid out for him for his fight. Do you know what I yeah. mean? Because yeah. he'd just been spent the full weekend watching the kid on YouTube. So I was about, it's good to have that. But if you do it, you can get too emotionally involved. Then. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think it's better for the trainer to do that. And- Pass the not the the message on the So it's not like you know before like in the dressing room before the fight is it not like oh, he's got like weakness there sort of thing to like that or is it just like sort of focus on yourself? To be honest with you, you, you never see them before the fight. Well, it's, in the amateurs you might do in the mm. championships like yeah. say it was in like Wally or Park or something yeah, yeah. and like the main door mm. to the sports hall. You might come outside and see them and you could get give them like the glare like. Yeah. <laughs> but that's a bad eh? like in the professionals you did in two different changes so yeah. you, you, you don't see them if you've seen you them the if you've seen them box before I suppose like your opponent when he's doing pad work with he's going to go and this is what he's going to do so you're oh, going to yeah. do this but with in the dressing room before it and that you're just literally just staying sharp do you know what I mean getting yourself warm getting yourself ready and then you get out there but like I said I haven't done it as a pro yet so it might be different with Derry and George mm. yeah do you not practice like the exact like not the exact punch or com- combination? Cause you look at like, you, I think have you seen like Masvidal with the UFC and the with Askren the knockout? Yeah, yeah. And he's just practicing and practicing and practicing, mm, and he goes in the ring and does that. It's McGregor yeah, with Aldo yeah. as well, and McGregor yeah, yeah. in the dressing room before he does the, the step back off, left hand, don't he? But um, yeah, I suppose if you've got a game plan, like UFC is probably, I don't know, the the MMA seem to seem to need the game plan more because there's so many different different yeah. things to yeah. worry about with certain different opponents things, isn't it? like that Askren was a wrestler so Masvidal knew like he probably needed to get that fight over as soon as he could because if he ended up on the floor he was going to yeah, be there for yeah. five rounds you know what I mean but yeah we we just like I, I still we still have a game plan and I still work on things that I think I'm better at the other kid than but like we said it's just focusing on ourselves more than anything I think weaknesses you work on your weaknesses isn't it like you, you add to, to your strengths, yeah. but you're all you're always working on your weaknesses. Mm. Uh, so whether that's like you're practicing a jab or a backhand or a lead 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 uppercut, backhand uppercut, you're always working on something. But you got you yeah. got to find you can't focus on something too much. You you gotta mix it up. But yeah, 
Yeah, I'd see strengths and pick up on your weaknesses. I'd say. Do you do it with these podcasts? Like, do you just watch them back and go, oh, we need to do do something different next time? Yeah, we do a bit, don't we? I don't myself, like. I watch them. He's leaving it to you, like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, sometimes, like, it's weird, isn't it? Like, sometimes. The ones we think that are, that are going to do well, don't do well. Mm. And mm. all the ones you think, oh, that one is good. It yeah. does better, it's like, it's weird. It just flies, yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. you find it, like, hard, obviously, like, you're both, like, how old are you, 23, did you say? 23, yeah. When are you 21? 23, yeah. 23 again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you find it hard, obviously, like, with the commitment, because, like, I was talking to you yesterday, you're saying you train twice a day, five times a week. Mm. And, like, most lads of your age, you're going out a lot and all that type of thing. Yeah. Um, most of our mates are going out on that as well, do you know what I mean? So there's mm-hmm. a lot of temptation when you get a text on a Friday night saying, do you want to come out on that? But um, obviously when, you f- when, you fight, when you're not fighting, you can probably go and join them for a couple of hours and then as long as you're not going mad. But when you when, when you are fighting, it's just all boxing, do you know what I mean? Like yeah. I, always, I, I text my mates before the ABAs last year and they said, listen, you aren't going to see me for a while. But when, when I'm done, I'll see you, do you know yeah. what I mean? Because I knew I had to focus on nothing but boxing. So it's commitments and it's just like fully committing yourself. But with the training and that, I have to like me, you'll be the same train twice a day for a few years now. Yeah. So like as soon as you let your body grow, as soon as you grow up to about seventeen, eighteen, that's when you can start doing it properly. Mm. And I don't know, like like I said, it's, it's the pro training is harder, it's a lot harder. And at the end of the week you do need that rest. Yeah. Whereas I had in the amateurs I'd finish me I'd train two times a week and I'd finish the week and I'd still run on a Saturday. Or I'll do something else, do you know what I mean? Do a bit of weight. But now I finish the week and I'm like, fuck me, I need to I need to rest now, do you know what I mean? Yeah. So I'll yeah. do nothing. Like as as you were saying, like it's just sacrifice, isn't it? And like it sounds cliche, like I know I'm gonna be a world champion. Josh knows he's gonna be a world champion. Like it's one of them, it's like do you do you, do you wanna go out with your mates or, or do you wanna be a world champion? Like, yeah, it's like the yeah. short term, it's you know like I mean? a long term goal, isn't it? Exactly. Um, it's just. I beef is still going to be there when 10 years, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. 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 Just hang on for a I bit. beef is always going to be there, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just get, you, get your money now, get in, get your money, get your titles, make your name for yourself, and then get out, and then you can do what you want then, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Look yeah. at Bellew, he's managing you, isn't he? Mm. he he's, I'd say he'd, he made all of his money. In the last three or four fights of his career. Like the hay fights mm. and like the Two hay fights, fights Usyk yeah. fights was probably all the, like most of the money that he made. I know he made, would have made money for Stevenson and stuff like that. Mm. But when you look at that, it's like all you need you that one chance and you get the you get a couple of big names. And then if you don't want to box no more, you don't have to, then do you know what I mean? It's 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 not a long career. Like so it's not like, oh, I can go out this weekend and then nah, you've got to be fully dedicated for, like, cause it's it it's not long and opportunities come and go in like a click of the fingers yeah. in this boxing game it's it's mad like I think with most boxers though that you'll find food's the most intriguing thing do you know what I mean that yeah. they struggle with like the diet and the diet and yeah. that do you know what I mean like obviously now I think shit, you've just you've just gained a nutritionist haven't you yeah, yeah. someone to do your meal preps and mm. Jazz, Jazz has got the same sponsor and stuff like that so I'm hoping I'll get with them myself so you'll have someone to do all your meals for you then, so it'll be a bit easier. Yeah. But let's say in the amateurs, you're going to work all day, six, f- finish at half five, six o'clock, you've got boxing. You finish boxing, you're getting in at eight o'clock, you're having it since one o'clock. It's so much easier to throw a pizza in for 20 minutes. Yeah. And yeah. sit there and prepare yeah. a dead healthy meal. Do you do your own food or like? At the minute, you do your own when you're not fighting and that, yeah. 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 But then when, once you get a, a date and you're open to get someone who's going to sort it all out for you. Do you know the helps you're having like? Like children to keep you grounded to stop you from like the temptation of going out and that type of thing. That that, that that's what I was gonna get onto before. So like from fifteen, I've been a dad. Like, so I, I didn't have like the big eighteenth and big sixteenth yeah. birthday of getting out with the lads. And I was at home with my kids, and if it, if it wasn't with my kids, I was in the gym. Yeah. So, I, it's been like that from eight years old. So yeah. Uh, don't get me wrong, as I've got older now, it is a bit more tempting like that. Get out the old from yeah. the kids, but uh, <laughs> get out with the lads, but no, not really. Like my goal is to become world champion, not not sit in some booze and, and say, would I could I? Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? That that that's that's my mindset now. Like I'm twenty three. 
I'm still a baby in the game now. Got a good one. Say 11 years left to get to where I want to get to, the pinnacle. So, 10, 11 years. My beef is gonna be there, bro. <laughs> <laughs> we've all been, we've yeah. all been in boozers, where especially me and Shaq, where mm. you, you're in a booze and someone, someone mentions, oh, he's a boxer, him. And then there's always one fella that's there that calls, oh, I used to box and that, I, I beat this fella. Eyes on this, eyes <laughs> on that. And they, they've always beat your coach, do you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Where's your box for that? <laughs> say, say, and they'll be like, oh, I beat Terry as an amateur, do you know what I mean? Like, did you, yes, man. <laughs> and it's like, well, look where he is now, look where you are. It's because yeah. the decisions he's made and the decisions yeah. they've made, do you know what I mean? So I just don't want to be that fella, you know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I'd, I'd, I'd rather be the coach or the yeah. manager than, than that fella and the boozer. Yeah. Do you thought about, like, obviously you haven't thought about retirement because you've only just started, but, like, what are you going to do after, like, the fighting stops? Because, as you said, it's a short career, isn't it? Yeah. Um, don't get me wrong, like, th- th- there's things there, but, like, the ultimate goal is, is, is just to achieve... It's just to reach my goals first before I even think about that. Um, what are the goals then? World champion. Pick up every domestic title. World champion. And then hopefully multi world champion. Is that all you want to do with though? Like British Commonwealth European World? Or would you just go from British to. Do you want all the collection? or? I'd wa- personally, I'd want the whole collection. Say maybe English, British, European. Than the world. I'll take any of me. Someone just said, I, I'd, I'd, I'd skipped <laughs> a lot of them to go for a world title, do you know what I mean? I think yeah. Jazza did, didn't he? Jazza, mm. Jazza won the British, and I think he won, he won a couple before it, but then he yeah. got the call for Riggin, though, who was one, as, yeah. as we know, one of the best fighters in the world, and that was for a world title, and it was probably before, not before he was ready for a world title, but before he was ready to fight Riggin, though, anyway, yeah, do you know yeah. what I mean? And he took it anyway, because obviously, let's say, he has a bad night, he gets injured, Jazza wins the title in the fight, you know what I mean? Yeah. Mm. And then he's the world champion then. So no matter what opportunity comes, whether whether it's in, in order or not, you're going for the world title when it comes. Uh, as I said, like opportunities like come and go like in, in the blink of an eye in, in, in boxing. I think um, obviously it, it, it's got to be right, you know what I mean? And that's what I, why I said, like sacrifice is so vital because an opportunity can come up like that yeah. and if you if you're not ready you wouldn't even have that inkling you head of could i could i you know yeah. it's, it's just no straight away it's like yeah. you're fat <laughs> you haven't been in the gym <laughs> yeah. like no you but start- if you've been in the gym and staying ready yeah, yeah. it's definitely all the odds in your favor then definitely because you can 100%. take it then you know what i mean it's just yeah Cause you've had a couple of you've had a couple of phone calls recently, haven't you? To say do you want to fight, and you've been on like four days notice and that, and mm. you just can't you can't be taking them. Do you know what I mean? Because four days notice is a bit mad. So with with the pros, it's probably if you get it on a week's notice and you let's say you know like this Masvidal fight with Usman the other week, mm. he must have been half training and knowing someone can pull out. So yeah. I'm, I'm just. Did you ever get told that that like you sort of like a reserve for a fight or no no. No, no, it doesn't work like that. I think um, so. Say I say I get a fight now, on, an Eddie Hearn show. Um, I pull out with an injury. Say, two weeks before the fight. Match room and looking. For whoever I was fighting, yeah. a replacement to to replace me, and if it's a good, if they they know it's a good kid. He's probably been in the gym. They probably put something out, and then probably give them it only a few days notice. Yeah, a few days notice. Like, so hey, do you want to take that? And that's why I said that like, you need to stay ready. Like, there's no. It's a short career. Sacrifices everything in this sport. Yeah. Um. But for Andy Ruiz, he took the Joshua fight on about three weeks notice. Yeah. You know what I mean? World yeah. heavyweight title, <laughs> unified heavyweight title as well. Do you know what I mean? Set his family up for life. Exactly. Yeah. And is right in the mix with them, isn't he? Yeah, still there, isn't he? Like, I know he, he won the title and went a bit off the rails, didn't he? And that's why he lost the second fight, but... um, I could say he come back and just, just off that, just saying, yeah, all he done was say, yeah, do you know what I mean? Yeah. I want the fight. Yeah. And he took yeah. that and no one gave him a chance, no one. Did they? 
I'll be honest, I did. Did you? I actually did. <laughs> Look, it's hard to say. I did. I said the seven for hand as well. Nah, nah I didn't. Um, <laughs> but I did give him a chance. Like. I didn't give him a oath, me. We, and we we were in Madrid because Liverpool played in the Champions League final that day. Mm-hmm. So we were in Madrid. And obviously when, when we won the final, we went out after it. So I was like, oh, I'll watch, I'll watch that tomorrow. He's going to batter him anyway, do you know what I mean? Yeah. And I woke up and my bird had texted me saying, oh my God, is if Anthony Joshua got beat? <laughs> and she doesn't watch boxing at all. So I was like... She she's wrong me, do you know what I mean? She's like, oh, I so I went on Twitter and Twitter was just full of Andy Ruiz with his world titles and I just couldn't believe it myself. That's mad. But it's it's the way he looked, wasn't it? That's it though, isn't it? Like it's the same with it's the same we were talking about Bell UA before. There's the picture of that way in where Bell stood on the scales holding his belly and yeah. David A's day, six pack and everything and yeah. Bell won both the fights, do you know what I mean? Stopped them both times. Do you feel like it doesn't help? It doesn't really matter what you look like. Even Fiori, because like Fiori's arguably same, he's one yeah. of the best heavyweights, isn't yeah. he? No, looks at this even. I think um you could be you, you could be chiseled like AJ, but AJ can't move like like Fiori, can he? No. You can get me wrong, he, he's a good fighter. Yeah. He's a safe nothing from him. But Look at his body compared to Shorty's. He can't move his feet like Shorty. Yeah. He can't get out the way of shots like Shorty. It's just um looks can be deceiving. Can yeah, because yeah. I'm dead I'm dead skinny. <laughs> so no one no one thinks I'm a boxer, do you know what I mean? When you meet when you meet people and you tell them they're boxing, you see them like, oh, oh looking they're up and down, are you? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Feel one of these. Yeah. <laughs> but sometimes like throughout history and that some of the skinniest people have been the most powerful. Like yeah. Don't say wild, there's like daff for it everywhere. And he's probably the hardest hitting, one of the hardest hitting heavyweights ever. I met Edwin Valero. Valero, Tommy Ernst. Tommy Ernst, his right hand could put anyone to sleep. And he was skinnier than me. Land. Know what I mean? He was like six What do you reckon that is then? Because normally if you look at someone like... It's leverage, That's mostly you think. Yeah. So it's leverage. Like, they have longer arms. They've longer got limbs. Longer limbs, more, yeah. They're more just, um, force. And you've probably got to work on technique more than someone who's got natural strength does. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. People with strength just think, I hit hard anyway. But if someone perfects how to throw one shot... Then the odds are they're gonna land it before the strong fella does. Yeah. What would you say, like, your best to, like, if you're just allowed to say this, like, you're not giving nothing away, your best to, like, assets as boxers are? Um, go ahead, Chef, you go first at that. I'd say, I'd say quite mentally strong. Um, and all, all, quite all rounded. I'd say, in, like, every department. What do you feel is, like, what's major mentally strong? So obviously you're talking about like from talks stuff and that and it's not like the richest of areas. Do you think that's helped? Yeah. Basically. Um just like growing up, just like growing up round here, like as kids do, like fighting. Like obviously you lose people in your f- in life yeah. and blah 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 blah. I think it's just uh it strengthens you, you know what I mean? Um, say like somebody not discriminating anybody from Allenton. Like somebody from Allenton that lives on like Mother Avenue, like yeah. them big, big, massive. Art. Not to say everybody's got their own problems, their own struggles, haven't they? But like, I think you'd probably be more comfortable up there. It'd probably be more comfortable struggles, if that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, I don't know what you mean. Yeah. Um, and I think it's, it's just that, really. What do you think's like kept you on like the sort of like the right path then, rather than sort of. Because I don't know if like, you have any like sort of people, friends and that, but I went like, off the rails type thing, or yeah. both of you. Like, like, I've got a good few friends that are in jail. I've got a good few friends that are dead. Like, it's just, I think my kids, me, like, before I had my first child, like, I, I was mad. <laughs> I, I was a bit, bit, bit of a fucking an idea. But I think once I had my first daughter, I think, it was like, wow, like, everything I do is going to affect her. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah. Mm. That's part yeah. of keeping on the state, that, isn't 100%, it? 100%, yeah. Even, like, the likes of, like, my mum. Like, my mum my mom said from the first time, she she seen me go to the gym, she said, you will be world champion, like. And I think that has stuck in my head as well, like. I've got good people around me. Do you know where I can go? Do you, and that's that. You don't. I don't want to let all these people down. The likes of Bell, you like. I've got the back in the gym now. I'm not looking to let him down. Like, yeah. I'm not looking to let my family down, my kids down. So, Do you feel yeah. like you wouldn't be in the position you are now if you never, like, you never had your daughter so young and that type of thing? Definitely not. Definitely not. I think I've probably been in jail all day, yeah. 
Sounds cliche, right? Yeah. Well, probably. What's like your um, sort of obviously you said your end goal was being a world champion, but if you had to like pick the perfect like scenario of winning it, where would it be? Like would it be like in Liverpool or I'd want I'd want wanna go over to America me. Like I, I I love like the history of boxing and that me, so I, I watching like Sugar Ray Robinson and that back in the day. Ali Frazier and all of that and all them fights happened in Madison Square Garden. And that's like the the pinnacle of boxing that in it, mm-hmm. Madison yeah. Square Garden. So I'd love to go over there and no matter who I'm fighting, just win a world title in Madison Square Garden and then come over and have the first defence at Anfield or somewhere like that, yeah. do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like Bellew at Goodison was unbelievable. Yeah, I'm a red, yeah. but Bellew at Goodison was unbelievable, do you know what I mean? Yeah. It was boss to watch. And the whole city got behind them. And like even the if you even the red reds got behind them, it's like the reds and blues are split all the way through when it comes to football. But as yeah. soon as like fighting and that gets involved, boxing or any other sport, it's yeah. that, that until it's the same blues get behind him. You know what I mean? It's it, it becomes one city then. So would you against them then? Isn't it? I I'd feel like I'd want to go to their back. I'm just mad. I, I'd <laughs> I'd want to go there and then like, be like, yeah, I'm 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 coming here and I'm I'm taking it off you. Yeah. yeah, but. It'd, it'd be sweet to box at Anfield and, uh, and win a world title there. Yeah. Or the yeah, MS Arena. Anfield, yeah. That's yeah, yeah. Keep us at Anfield, innit? Yeah, yeah. Um, Have you ever boxed in there, Hull? No. Haven't you? No. I boxed there once. I was on, like, there was no one there. Don't, when I say no one, <laughs> I boxed at, like, half uh, 11 at night when everyone else had gone home. Yeah. There was there was me, this lad, we're sparring him on Friday as well, aren't we? Brian Phillips, his name is. Yeah. He's a good kid. And a, but he boxed for the RT, who Shaq used to box for. Mm. And me and him boxed each other, but we were the last fight. It was like half 11. The only people there was me, him, our coaches and our parents. Do you know what I mean? That was literally it. And after the fight was gone, like I think after the we'd had, 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 had my hand raised and then we got out. I think the whole the lights went off and everything, and everything just stopped. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> then what, getting put away. I don't really. You, got your trophy. you can't really <laughs> count that as boxing at the Echo because you tell people you've boxed at the Echo, they expect you to be walking out with crowds around you. Yeah. Man was the total opposite of that. You know what I mean? There was three rings, so there was one, two, three rings. I was in the, the ring at the far end when no one was even watching, so I'm not counting that until like I've actually been in there and and people have actually watched me fight. You know what yeah. mean? How did you like your parents react when you said you want to be a boxer? Like both of you. So it's one of them, innit? Like, you can, like, whether you like it or not, you can have serious damage done to you, can't you? Yeah, my mum was, when I was younger, my mum used to come and watch me and she'd be the loudest person there. Since the egg guards came off in the amateurs, she hasn't been to see me since. And I, at first, I have thought that as if she, she's not bothered anymore, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Mm. But I know she is. My dad, though, my dad's my biggest fan, he'll follow me, he'll follow me everywhere. I'll say I'm, I'll say I'm fighting. And we went to the Arangay Cup in London, which is a weekend in London. And my dad, uh, my dad came down and watched me for the full for the full weekends, Thursday to Sunday, and he had his own plans and that. Just cancelled them all and just drove down straight away, and stuff like that. But um, my dad's helped me a lot. My my dad got me in contact with with my uncle Steve and that who's who's helped me more. Perhaps say he's helped me more than anyone. Do you know what I mean? Boxing yeah. wise, he's taught me a lot. He's um he's put me in touch with George and the likes of them, like I said before. So yeah, my my dad's my biggest fan, and my ma, my ma like. My mum just works that hard, do you know what I mean? And my mum, like, when we were growing up, I, like I said, I, I'm not, I haven't had her as hard as, as, hard as probably Shaq has growing up and stuff like that, but my mum was always, like, sacrificing herself to put food on the table for me and me and yeah. making sure we weren't, we weren't suffering, do you know what I mean? So I just want to, that motivates me then to give it back to her, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So no no one's going to beat you when, when you're fighting to, to, do, to, to repay someone who's done all that for you. Yeah. I mean, it's a bit of a funny one with me mum so like the amateurs on the back of the career because I, I sort of fell out of love with it and she she knew she knew that so she would she didn't really come to me last one but for to like me last six seven but i had nearly 100 amateur fights she was at every single one home or away yeah. I've boxed there enough everywhere in the country. She make sure she was there. She was always the one at the side of the ring getting told to move back. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, since I turned professional, she come to me debut. Um, she didn't like it. She she doesn't like it. If she comes, she won't watch. 
It heads in between her legs and she just like tap me like when it's when it's finished. <laughs> and and that's that. Um But she don't she just like I know I know you're gonna win and you're gonna get it, but I know my granddad boxed. Mm. Um he won the Commonwealth silver or something in the amateurs in the seventy four games in New Zealand. He was a he was a professional boxer as well. Um I think she's seen like from him growing up how tough it was and then obviously now I'm doing it she likes it but I just don't think she likes seeing me go through like yeah. the weight courts and then having to fight she's just but, struggle with that the weight courts not struggle but you find it like challenging like even mentally more than anything I think any fighter that says I make the weight fine and I feel great the chatting shit yeah. <laughs> the, the, yeah, the, the chatting shit there's no fight even an MMA I don't think there's any fighter on this planet that says I make weight easy and if you make weight easy you're at the wrong weight mate yeah. Yeah. see I'm, I don't struggle to make the weight I'm not saying I make it easy do you know what I mean because yeah. training camps dieting is always a struggle you've got to go 8 weeks without having one scram that you want do you know what I mean <laughs> eight, if, 8 full weeks where like no no, like on a weekend when your bird says let's just get a chippy in <laughs> you can't say yeah and saying no to them is the hardest like l- last time when I was in the ABAs that was probably the first, because cause I was injured the first year, that was probably the first time my bird had ever seen me go through a, a diet and training camp. Mm. And um, she kept saying, should we just do this, should we just do that? <laughs> and I, in the end, I just said, listen, I'm not coming out of yours anymore because you keep asking if I want a Mackey's and I can't have <laughs> you know what I mean? And stuff like that. Yeah. So dieting, like, I always say, you know, when people ask, will you let your kids box in there? I'd let them train in that, but if they're, if they're going to be sat there starving themselves, Training and training and so on, and sitting there of a, of a Saturday night, you're weighing in on a Sunday morning, you have an essence the Friday night. Do you know what I mean? Mm. And you can't, you don't want to see anyone go through that, especially like you know, like someone someone you love, like you don't want to see them go through that. It, it is, it is great, like, yeah. we love it. Yeah, I know, it, it is mad, isn't it? Because we're, we're doing all that. We're starving ourselves and getting punched in the head. We're doing all that. <laughs> we're doing all that to get punched in the face, yeah. and it's mad. It is mad. There's something about it that's just yeah. dead addictive about boxing, you know what I mean? Because there's so many, not negatives, but there's so many things that have put a lot of people off. We're only food, but elite leather. Yeah. <laughs> mad, isn't it? There's so many things that have put a lot of people off, and boxers just love it, you know what I mean? You just can't, like, you, you yeah. see some great boxers from the past, Roy Jones Jr., Bernard Hopkins, they just go on till they're about 50. Because mm. mm. they, they can't give it up, do you know what I mean? Yeah. I think what you need to do is find the replacements. You, for yeah. when you're like finished that's like the high yeah, thing, yeah. yeah yeah otherwise you'll never you'll never fi- you'll never finish like yeah. you see people who used to be in the army always go into MMA and stuff like that because they need that battle type of thing yeah. do you know what I mean yeah so it's just even like a pandemic we just went through a pandemic like I was going nuts like not being able to be in the gym with the lads and be training I was uh, nobody could be even even my ass was like fuck oh, no you want right like, no, I haven't been to the gym. She's like, fucking hell, the gym. Like, yeah, the gym. <laughs> <laughs> Go, going on runs and I get stopped by police and they're like, what are you doing? Like, on the run and I've like, seen you two hours ago, mate. Get home, mate. Like, yeah, mate. <laughs> doing a little 16 mile, like 16 <laughs> miles. Get yourself home, lad. And it's just like, <laughs> one Lock, of them ones. Lockdown for me was like proper. Most people have had a terrible time through it, do you know what I mean? But I was working. I'd already agreed to turn pro with Derry and uh, and, um, and, and uh, spoke to me management and then they were ready to take me on but I was saying listen I'm on a contract and work till like July I need to finish that contract before I can before I can get out of there and I'd like to I wanted to make a bit more money as well so when I, when I was ready I was ready to say pro I'd have money behind me to to train every day but like as soon as the lockdown came I was just sat there and I was training every day again because I was working 10 hour days couldn't train twice a day and I was back training twice a day again loving it and it just hit me one day, I was like, I'm not going back to work now. I was like, I'm just leaving. So, because I was on furlough, I stayed on there for a, for a good few weeks longer. But as soon as the time came to, to go back, I was just like, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm turning pro now. So, lockdown, for, exactly lockdown, job. <laughs> lockdown for me, it, let's let's say, I go on to do good things. Lockdown for me could be one of the best things that's ever happened to me, do you know what I mean? Because yeah. Yeah. it was the moment that I realised what I wanted to do properly. And... Yeah, so most people, like, I hear people moaning about lockdown, and I'm like, 
I didn't have that much of a bad one. <laughs> on a we wouldn't start like, this, would he? Probably. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To be fair as well, like, because I work as well, it's, it's, been, it's been a blessing because I'm always working. If I'm not working, I'm in the gym. I've, I've been able to spend a lot more time with my kids. Yeah. yeah. So I'd say, yeah, I'd thank lockdown for that. Yeah. There's always positives to take, isn't there? Did you start this, like, in the height of lockdown, did you? Or? It was June, weren't it? Yeah, we done it at home and that for a bit. Like, yeah. Mike's in our bedroom on the phone, weren't it? But yeah. we came here then. Yeah. How was that? Was that like a, like a Zoom thing and then... Like no, it was just like an audio thing. Yeah. It was like was being it, on the yeah? phone and it was recorded, basically. Yeah, Do you yeah, prefer... Like you, obviously, you're going to prefer yeah. doing this, don't you? Yeah. It's not worse than when the app, like, we would do it, um, listen to it back and, like, one person's sounds would, like, sync by, like, five oh, seconds. Oh. Like, there's been conversation going on. Did you have this in, like, your man before lockdown or was it we, lockdown that brought it on? It's one of them because we didn't really know, like, how much a studio would be and all that. But then, obviously, we like... Spoke to Jacob and that Liverpool podcast studio, and like, um, <laughs> little plug obviously, thing. we agreed, like, we'd come here <laughs> and all that, but it has been better since, like, it just yeah. looks better than that, doesn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a good little setup, I like it. So, thanks, bro. No, it's <laughs> <laughs> got any more questions then before we finish up? Um, yeah, we always finish on what's your favorite pint? Maretti, Maretti, yeah. yeah, like Maretti, me. I order Peroni, I like the Italian ones. <laughs> Chef doesn't drink pints, do you, lad? I <laughs> haven't <laughs> for, for a while like Peroni or San Miguel San Miguel what about yours? P- Peroni on draft class like yeah it is nice I like sad a lot like yeah. I don't yeah. like you want a dark fruit or nah like an apple a sad a proper sad <laughs> oh. I tell you what though the Dutch Harnigan did not like it <laughs> not like it did have you Look, listen. Like in Holland or just yeah, in, 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 in Holland. Yeah, in Holland, bro. On draft, heavy. Going back onto lockdown, like, um, no, when a few places started opening up a little bit and doing takeout pints and that. Yeah. Mm. When Liverpool won the league, we City were playing Chelsea that night, weren't they? Yeah, yeah. We made the weather was great, so we made was like, yeah, I'll come to Bolton for a bit to take out pints there, and obviously we I hadn't I hadn't had the drink of, it, of any sort for a good few months because even before lockdown I weren't drinking that much. And then um, you get to, the, it was crossed away in, in, in Walton that was doing the takeout pint, so they do put on me. So it was like, well, you get it in a plastic cup and that. And even though it's like that, it was still probably the nicest pint I've ever had in my life. No, because you had my mum and so on. Just had one sip, I was like, that is great. <laughs> you probably would have said Carlin was nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Little Carl's bag. <laughs> It's a nice one for that, boys. Appreciate oh, it. Nice one for having us. Once again, um, sponsored by Atropolis Clothing. Thanks very much. <laughs>